Come on, everybody, and do the funky chicken. <laughs> Sounds good. Can we pass the flyers? That was the one. Come on, everybody, and do the funky chicken. <laughs> Sounds good. Can we pass the flyers? That was the one. Hey, Mo. You're on, buddy. You're on now, man. Oh, we got a Spanish shot. Oh, we have there we got translation. Today, so what, what has happened so far today? What's happened so far today? We did. Well, we, we carpooled over here from the Redstone Building, and which is at 2940 16th Street. It's a labor organizing center, amongst other things. There's artists there too, and we drove over here to the Richmond Recreation Center, where the mayor is holding his first town hall style forum. <laughs> Which would have cost the Board of Supervisors $15,000 to attend according to state, state law, and the mayor knew that. Um, what else? <laughs> Anything I say, Ramon? Anything? Um, what else? It's a town hall meeting. Yeah. We're here to... Um, the mayor claims he supports a living wage. He claims he supports health care for all and paid sick leave. Right. And, Yet he and his friends in the hotel and restaurant industry and the Golden Gate Restaurant Association continue to work against those things behind the scenes. That's a big part of the reason why we're here today. You, you know a little more about that than I do. I'm just working with what I've got. Yeah, That's go all. Go for it. Go for it. So, so, so we, we got here today. And um, yeah, we got here. <laughs> <laughs>
Testing. This one, uh, listeners. Okay, wait. Check out this part. Bear chicken. Oh, <laughs> bear chicken. Oh, that was a good one. You got that? Is it clear? I got focus? it. I'm just focused. Really focused. <laughs> All right, shit. Check that out. Uh, Pete, you can pause that when you're playing it, and people can read it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right? You know, blam. Get the chickens. Get the chickens. I got it. Get, get the interview. They're interviewing right there. The latest interview. Then just go to them and film it too. Absolutely. But get her. Get her. Thing. What she's saying though too. Right? Anything to say to anyone on YouTube right now? Get closer so you can hear them. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So my tickets. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why we're here. Because we want one of our own. And we're particular. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good. Chad, do you live in the neighborhood? I live in San Francisco. <laughs> Which neighborhood? In the Mission. In the Mission. Okay. Do you want to give me your last name? Yes, sir. It's T E G 
people in the city don't understand by art. Give a lady two bedrooms, would you please? And of course we got it, but said that, ask yourselves, ask yourselves, what have you done for a poor person lately? The last, the top four numbers on my card, call one of them, and that person will be picked up. It is so important. Don't just walk by them, especially if they're elderly or disabled in any way. Father Hardin. I'd like to uh, underscore what uh, Angela is saying because it's, it's extremely important when we talk about the supportive part of housing, that is what sometimes is the big, biggest obstacle to the folks is cut, going through the paperwork. Um, as the mayor knows, we started this uh, food stamps in a day at St. Anthony's and was uh, uh, blessed by the city because uh, you need a PhD to fill out all the paperwork. And, letting it, and you start talking about SSI, it's even worse than that. And so that's the important piece, and I think that's, and I have had several discussions about that, because St. Anthony's actually has a shelter, a uh, shelter for women at 8th and Mission and transitional housing. And uh, I, I respectfully disagree with Angela that I think we do need shelter until we get enough supportive housing online. Um, but there's a caveat to this. It's the quality of shelter and it's a great place as I know uh, the outreach team is doing and the uh, uh, HSA is doing it's a great place to uh, intersect with people to get them into permanent housing is in the shelter system so here again one last comment and this is from my Franciscan background this is all about relationships yes it's all about relationships and the hot team is doing a great job going out there and establishing relationships with these people that have been promised lots of things over the last God knows how many years and nothing happened and so why do you think they're suspicious because nothing happened and so they're not going to just say because goody two-shoes is out there and uh, Father John's in his habit that something's going to change and it is changing, and it takes a long time to overcome that cynicism. Again, another timely topic. There, there are a bunch of questions, uh, absolutely appropriate questions. What the city, and this is just an example, what is the city's federal advocacy agenda given the new congressional makeup, particularly in regard for the increased McKinney Avento and Section 8 housing funding? I mean, here we are. We have Nancy Pelosi from San Francisco, first speaker of the House from California, let alone San Francisco. Uh, we have a unique and historic opportunity to advocate uh, against the tide of federal cuts for, uh, for housing, particularly at HUD uh, and Section 8. Uh, what are we doing to make sure that we are front and center in this federal agenda to begin to end the realities of homelessness? Mr. Mayor, you can answer that question as well as I can. Um, Hopefully you we, can answer all of them as well as you can, Trent. Uh, <laughs> I know he <you> can. <laughs> on this issue, absolutely. Um, it is a great opportunity um, to advocate for what we need um, from the federal government and also the state government, although it's not as good of an opportunity, but they've been particularly absent in our efforts to help the chronically homeless. The biggest issue that we're grappling with from the federal government is, is funding for the services and the operating state level for our whole state this year makes a huge difference in terms of the funding. We're counting on Fiona Bob, who just arrived, to make sure we get our fair share of Prop 1. Absolutely. Right? So
philosophy is simple. It's continuum of care we talked about is important, but oftentimes your continuum of care manages a problem as opposed to solving a problem. Direct access to housing is about getting someone out of the sidewalks, off the streets, and into housing to stabilize them, and then coordinating wraparound services, supportive services, to deal with the underlying reason the person became homeless in the first place, be it behavioral health issues, drug or alcohol issues, issues of vocational deficiencies or physical needs. And that program is being replicated across the country as a best practice from the city and county of San Francisco, and money is being funded accordingly. So it's something you should all be very proud of that has come from the inspiration and advocacy of people like yourselves in San Francisco in relation to this effort. I also happen, and I'm very proud of this, uh, to be the head of the Homeless uh, Task Force in the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So we're coordinating strategies with mayors across the country in terms of our federal advocacy to deal with the cuts, not only in Section 8, the cuts with community development block grants and uh, other investments into poverty eradication, but we're also working very aggressively on trying to stave off these cuts to Hope 6 uh, and the devastating cuts we've seen in our housing and more the capital projects. Uh, and we're trying to get creative as we do that at the same time to translate that we don't want to just advocate responsibility and point the finger, but we're coming up with our own, what we call local Hope 6, a strategy in San Francisco to redevelop our housing authority sites. Our session, that legacy is 1,726 people that were receiving cash assistance and who were not housed are now housed because of that initiative. But that's for single adults. We're seeing a growing number of families in the city, the state, the nation that need support. What are we doing? address the issue of families. And are families part of the 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness? Well, from, from my side, uh, they originally were not. Um, they are in the plan, um, and they are discussed in detail in the plan because we did so many. We spoke to over 900 agencies and individuals, uh, and we did so much research on families, along with the professor in, uh, in uh, Philadelphia, who's uh, uh, Dennis Cajon, who did an report on this issue. Now that we have indeed though housed over 200 chronically homeless, as I said earlier, we are now going into the um, family issues, especially those that are chronically hom homeless. Chronically homeless families are very, very different than from chronically homeless individual in that um, you can be chronically homeless and go from house to couch to couch to couch to couch. Um, and that's what a lot of families do. Uh, those on the street, those are actually sleeping on the street. So on one hand, you're not doing 
housing Paul. And everyone said, well, that's outrageous. Why does Paul deserve $33,000 housing? I barely make my ends meet. I've got to pay the bills, and you're not giving me nothing. Well, we're saving you, I would argue, uh, close to a million dollars a year because of that wise investment. And by the way, Paul is doing great because now he has more in care home and real housing. So goes the philosophy of what we're trying to achieve on the issue of homelessness. Um, we have, and that is a buy, or what is it, every two years now, John? Every two years we go out and we are going to be doing a citywide homeless county. So we're not dealing anecdotally with how many homeless we quote unquote believe there are in San Francisco. Uh, this homeless count is going to occur at 7 p.m. until midnight uh, on January to, to get us the information. All that is, uh, if you don't know where you are, 